Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today, let's talk about blending your bio hair with your wig. If you have bio hair and it sometimes shows on your wigs at the sideburns, but it doesn't look incredibly natural because it doesn't really blend well, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of tips and techniques that you can use so that you will be confident in wearing your wig. You can pull the wig off of your head, you can put it in a ponytail, you can tuck it, and if your bio hair shows, you know that nobody will be the wiser. So if you wanna know more about this, stick around. to say at the very beginning here that I, even though I'm using a human hair wig to demonstrate, you can do this with any wig. Synthetic, heat friendly synthetic, human hair, super budget Amazon wig. You really can do this with any wig. So don't see me using a human hair wig and think it's only limited to this one. The wig incidentally is a human hair wig by Lou's Wigs. This is called Peyton. When Lou's Wigs names their wigs, that's the color. So this is in the color Peyton, which is a stock color. They do carry pieces in this color often, and you can custom order one in this color if this is a color that you really like. Um, so just for those of you who always wanna know, but please know you can do this with any, any wig. So the supplies that you will need in order for this to work for you may vary. I am going to demonstrate using a straightener. I'll explain why, but if you are trying to blend straight hair with curly hair, you can certainly use a curling iron so that you can get a little bit of curl in there. I'm also going to use root touch-up powder. Now, I love, 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 love <laughs> these root touch-up powders by Style Edit. I have so many of their colors because I wear so many different colored wigs. So depending on the color of wig that you wear, you may not need as many of these as I have, but because I wear blondes and I wear reds and I wear various shades of brunette, I have a dark brown. This one is dark brown. I have light brown. I have medium brown. I have red. I have light and medium blonde. So just know they have a lot of different colors and they work great. Love them. I will put a link in the description. And if I have a coupon code, I used to have a coupon code, but it's been a really long time. So I don't know if it's still active. If it is, I will put it in the description so you can try it and save some money. All right. So let me demonstrate how I'm going to blend my hair. Let's talk about the challenges that I have. Now, you can see I have, first of all, the length isn't there, but that's really not a problem. Most people have baby hairs, regrowth in this area, so that's fine. But my hair is not only really getting gray, as you can see, it's very frizzy. It's like that texture that gray hair can sometimes have, sort of frizzy, unruly. Sometimes I have pieces that want to kind of stick out differently from the rest of my hair. So that can be a real challenge when I'm looking to blend my wigs. If I'm going to wear a curly wig, I really don't feel the need to do anything with that because I think it looks really natural with curly. It's more the color that I try to match. But when I'm looking to do a straight wig, this is what I like to do. So this is a straightening iron. And actually, I've never talked about this one before. It's by Surme. There's a glare there. I'll put a link in the description to this. It's on Amazon. It's not very expensive. What I love about it is it is portable. It's cordless and it's really small, so it's easy to travel with, easy to stick in your bag. It charges with a USB cord. Let me turn it on here. Oh, my battery's almost dead. And so you can see it's got a digital display and it's got three different temperatures that you can use. This will work on heat-friendly wigs, uh, human hair wigs, and obviously your bio hair. So the first thing I wanna do to avoid all of this sticking out is I just wanna take the straightener and I want to straighten that out. What I'm doing is I'm just smoothing out the hair and getting it so it lays flatter. So instead of this, I get this. And then I'm going to put my wig back on before I do any color. And I'm just going to check that out. So what I want you to see, let me get this away from my face. 
Look at the difference. Now, I'm never going to be perfect because I have little tiny short hairs that I really can't get in the straightener, but I can use some product on that. When I add some color, that will help. But look at the difference. This is laying nice and straight and more sleek, and this is still a wiry mess. That's the goal. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially if you're just going to wear the hair. Oops, I got a little tangle. If you're going to wear the hair down like this, you, all you can really see is a little bit in there. This one is a lot more obvious. The next step would be to make sure that it blends with the color of the hair. Now, because my hair is graying, and this is a, got, has these money pieces that are fairly ashy, it actually doesn't, it's, it blends fairly well. If this were a super dark wig, then you would really see that. So what I would do is I just kind of look at all of the colors that I have. And again, you may only need one color if you wear similar hair all the time. And I think I'm going to go with the medium brown because what I'd like to do, and these have a little puff right inside that can, the case. What I like to do is just sort of touch it up kind of near the root so that it creates more of a shadow in there. You can see how that's a little shaded now and just creates that shadow effect. And since this is a, it has some darker tones up here, I think that works great. Also, if you have some hair, but you also sort of have no hair or sort of a receding hairline and you think that doesn't look natural, you can actually put a little bit of this on your skin just to kind of shadow that in a little bit and make it a little less obvious. So there's lots and lots of options that you can use to make it blend. You can even combine colors or you can like what I might do is I took a little bit of that at the root. Now I might take a little bit of the blonde. I don't know if I should do medium or light blonde. The nice thing about this is it comes off fairly easily. It's not going to come off, um, just by brushing it but if you take a little bit of maybe makeup remover you can get that off if you do choose the wrong color and then do it again so now i'm going to put that might be a little too light but that's okay i'm just going to dab a little bit on and then do that so now this is this side and if i want to tuck it's going to blend a lot better versus this side you can see it's all sticking out right there. That is why you want to take a few minutes if you're struggling and just fix your hair so that it will blend better. Can you see the difference? All right, everybody, that's my tip for you today. I will link everything in the description. You don't have to purchase any of the products I ever show. It's just for reference, but you know, price shop and, and try to find something that fits your budget if what I'm showing doesn't. But I really think you should check out this cordless straightener, especially if you travel or if you find yourself doing your hair away from home, at, maybe at the gym or something like that. This really handy. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll talk to you in my next video.